Kate Tamiki, Kate Tamiki, Kate Tamiki, out to Kao Koto Kato Kilda, and welcome. It's quarter final time in the Fox, and we are based out west today, and it's the local derby, too. There's a lot to look forward to in this matchup. It's the Glenora Bears up against the Tautatu Roosters. Both of them have had fine seasons, but now we'll see who will advance with a chance to take the prestigious trophy. Great to have you along. Neda Tamiki Kao a warm welcome to the Fox and ARL TV. Good day, Tene, and beside me, Wade Brinston. Hey, Wade, it's good to have you back from Oz, man, and uh, looking forward to this one. Great crowd on, and what a terrific game we've just witnessed here as we build up to this big clash. The Westies doing battle in the local derby. Yeah, kia ora, Dale. Thanks for welcoming me back. Um, what a game that a reserve grade game was just then. They went into extra time, and the atmosphere down here is electric. There's nothing better than local footy and finals time. So really looking forward to this clash of the West. Well, we've got some fine players who are out on the track today and, and the intensity is going to be right there. Big crowd on hand. Uh, let's have a look at the lineup today for the Tautatu Roosters. And as you can see, plenty of talent in there with Joyce and Pefairangi. We've got some excellent uh, skill sets out with Siaki and Oliveti. So they're a team that have been running really well. They've only dropped two games through the course of the year. One of them actually was against uh, their opponents this afternoon. Let's check in with their coach, Phil Gordon. Phil, it's been a good season. Yeah, mate. Uh, yeah, really good season for us. You know, we tried to build over the last two years being in the Fox and um, trying to be more of uh, consistent with our efforts week in, week out. And, uh, yeah, I think we went a long way to achieving that this year. Last time you played Glenora, you got beaten. How's preparation been? Uh, you know, I, I, I suppose with um, sometimes, you know, within a loss, you learn more about yourselves and, and how you need to play and approach a game. And hopefully, you know, we've learned our lesson and uh, we've tweaked a few things this week in training and, you know, we've got a specific plan for today and it's all about, I guess, executing that. Seems like you've got the strongest team possible out there today. Oh, pretty much, mate. Like, um, i I got to uh, take my hat off to the depth we're trying to build within the club and, um, you know, I'd like to think any 17 we put out is always our strongest at that time. Thanks, Phil. Go well. Thanks, mate. Yeah, the other two Roosters, they've had a few championships over the years, but they'd certainly like to win the one in 2022. The compressed format has brought together teams who've seen some real class surfacing as we look at the Glenora Bears lineup for today. And they too are stacked with experience and skill. Thomas Sampson, Tiptons in the mix, uh, Chase Bernard, they've all been there and done that. Ralu Buchanan's a tackling machine. And of course, out wide, you've got Lua Falealu and Tomata. So, a really skillful team on the track today for this proud club from West Auckland. We're based at their Harold Moody home ground. And as you can see, there's a a huge crowd in the background too, so it's going to be a heck of a game, heck of a contest. Really pleased you're able to join us here this afternoon. Uh, earlier on, Wade checked in with the coach uh, of the Glenora Bears, Tony Benson. Kia ora, just here with Glenora Bears coach Tony Benson. Tony, it's been a good season so far? Yeah, it has been good. It's been you know, a different season with the competition that's thrown up at us. Um, we fought through it pretty hard and then the last few weeks has been giving us a chance and having a week off to uh, rest a few and get some injuries in order and uh, coming in pretty strong today then. Yeah, you've had the week off, how's prep been? It's been really good actually, it has been good apart from the rain but <laughs> you expect that don't you around here. Um, no, it's been, it's, it has been good, as I said we got a chance to uh, get rid of some niggly injuries that guys have had for a few weeks and rest some of the guys that uh, have a bad injury and uh, so they've come back quicker. Which, is, which has been really good for us. Last time you played them, you touched them up. What are you expecting from them this time? Oh, well, they're not going to be happy with it, and I know they'll be coming out to try and sort things out, um, as they would. They're a good side, and um, I think we caught them on the hop last time. So they'll be ready for us, and, of course, we're ready for them as well. We, we'll do you know, pretty much what we did last time, but we've got some new stuff for them and, um, that they won't expect, and we'll just see how it goes, see how it plays out. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Go well. Pleasure. Thank you. Bit of secret squirrel stuff there too. Uh, you know, we must have a couple of pieces of uh, weaponry in the armoury. Uh, and as we uh, await to configure, Rasmussen's in control of the action. Of course, the Glenora Bears have won five championships, the last of them being in 2017. Had a decent run there through 97, 98, 99. And uh, they've certainly had a lot of great players along the way. Stepping back in time to the likes of Mung Emery and Billy Sorensen and Dano Hara, Dennis Williams. And then in more recent times, Ebrahami Loaki has been a monster for them uh, in recent years. Wairangi Korpu, Henry uh, Pitanara, 
uh, the list goes on. Proud club. And they know they're in for a real battle here this afternoon. As I say, good crowd in today too. The Westies have come out. and uh, I think they love these local derbies, mate. Yeah, it's a really good crowd. And from what I understand, the other two reserves, they should have had their home game. as They, were the, they finished higher than Glenora, but they asked to have this game here. So the whole community could get in behind today and didn't want to split the crowds. And we see there the hottest ref in, in Australasian Rugby League, Vigo Rasmussen, also known as Vigorous Rasmussen. Uh, Auckland Rugby League wanted me to give him a shout out. The well, perfect jawline. Well, it's a perfect jawline, and and a good guy too. And uh, of course, uh, we met really when we were doing some commentary together with uh, yourself and Vigo. So I know he takes his refereeing very seriously. Well, Upi Pifarangi is uh, a young man. He's got a lot on his shoulders, but he's the sort of guy who can handle it. And after seeing the exciting conclusion to the last game, we're into the action. It's quarterfinal time in the ARL Fox Premiership. And it will be the Tatatu Roosters playing from right to left and the Glenora Bears first to receive. There'll be a bit of settling uh, in here uh, and uh, we we'll just want to have a, a top game of footy. I'm really looking forward to seeing what these two teams have got to dish out for us here this afternoon. Lua Faleala with the settler and across the top comes Bako uh, Takakala. Uh, this is Fine. Their lineup, of course, through the middle. Vaivai and Baipi, as we see now with the ball, the Bears, just a, a settling run at the moment from Chaz Brown. There's been a lot of rain in Tamaki Makoto over the last couple of weeks. A bit of respite yesterday, and so the track is standing up pretty well, having already had one game on. I remember it used to be a bit of a mud heap, but uh, it's certainly looking good nowadays, and we're in for some fast-flowing action here this afternoon. Here's the end of the first set. And it's launched off the foot of Iwaka. It's a big, high, towering bomb. And the climb through, sweet light. Look at that start. Isam Iwaka takes the ball that was launched up by his bro. And in he goes to score. What a take. The fullback flying. Didn't take his eye off the ball and collected it in like he was grabbing the bag of shoppings from pack and save. And he's in the score. Good try to start the game here. And a quick try, too, for the Glenora Bears. Yeah, great start from Glenora Bears and a great start from that young man, Isam Yorka, who catches a beautiful kick off his brother. Isam, the Akaranga under-20s player of the year at the start of the year in the national comp. And he takes this ball superbly. Interesting to note, too, that without Wyatt Rangi, who usually plays fullback, and Isam scores a beautiful try to open up this game. Oh, that really sets the crowd alight right from the get-go, doesn't it? But look at the concentration as he comes through, claims the football against his opposite Cheney, and even finishes it off with a spectacular dive in front of the fans here at Harold Moody Park. Great start here for the Xenora Bears. He's a good player, he's from Yorker. From what I understand, he's off to Aussie next year, so he'll be heading up into Queensland. I think it's Mackay Cutters he's going to, so he's off to the Queensland Cup. Really good pick-up. Like, like I said, Wyatt Rangi's out today. He's a very good player. He's out with a groin injury, so Isam needs to stand up at the back. Well, he certainly stood up to take that one. Climbed high. Beautiful take. And really uh, a textbook start as far as the home team are concerned. Wonderful effort. The lead-up work throughout the set was smart. And then the final kick was a testing one for the fullback from the Roosters. But Iwaka in there for a spectacular start to this afternoon's encounter. Of course, another three top-class games on across the city as well with point against Mount Albert Howick and Bay Roskill. The Otahuhu Leopards lining up as well against Richmond. So I tell you what, we'll be keeping you posted on that, all building towards next week's semis and, of course, the finals to come soon after Coma Sampson. Great to see Coma still involved with the game. He had a stint in France early in his career. In fact, I take my hat off to a lot of these guys who've had opportunities offshore. Pefai Lung is another example of a little knock-on at the dummy half. So after uh, putting on a, a good effort in that first set, unable to continue on, you always want to have some accuracy uh, when you've just scored at this time around. A little fumble from Tippins. Uncharacteristic mistake from the experienced rake. Yeah, just a bit of lack in concentration there. Coach Tony Benson won't be happy. You always want to get to your kick at the end of the... Well, after scoring a try, and they're inviting Tatatu right back into this. 
There's Glen Eaton, as you can see now, a metropolis with the big tower in the background. Not exactly everyone's cup of tea, but of course it's right on the rail line here in Tamaki Makona. Good to have you uh, watching in other parts of the world and across Aotearoa. Very proud club, club the uh, Glen Ore of Ears. So it's Pefai Rangi now, spinning effort for their big number 20. Change in jersey number. It's Douglas uh, Vertupu in 20. This time around, it's Bako Takakala Fine. So the well set here as Maipi gets hold of the ball. And now the bullet pass wide. That was a smart pass, also. Just checking out their opportunities down the left edge. Roosters with it now, and as you can see, just 15 metres out from the try line as the big man charges forward. Been solid, Talatu on the grow. Phil Gordon's done a lot to help the club get itself established in the top league. The chip into the end goal. Skinny end goals here at Harold Moody. And this one was just weighted slightly too heavily. Yeah, Joseph Price there coming up with a, with a bad kick. I think if he could have his time over, he'd probably do something again. As Yorker brings the ball out. What we saw in the reserve grade game, it was a big lead early on that was clawed back to make it a super exciting finish and the crowd absolutely loved it fire money with the play the ball now again no nonsense approach once again from bernard as he manages to pop the ball the uh, ball late Little jersey changes Masafalangi is now in eight, Sampson in ten. Back to one, I think. So Glenora set the stage with a charging run. Masafalangi again. Big, solid prop forward out of dummy half. Goes Tippins. Nice little ball. Sends it to fire money. Pulled the ground of the tackle of Reese Joyce, who's busy himself, and it'll have to be busy too as Tippins again darts forward. He's lost the football. The Roosters come away with it. Fullback Delaney Cheney is wrapped up out wide there by Alu Buchanan. Just need to settle things down here a little bit. Uh, Tatatu. Get to the back end of these sets and punch into the corners with a deep kick. Nice effort from Cortez Taulu. Solid wing three quarter as we see a good charge and run, good effort as well. The tackle's made by Vasavalangi. And up to play the ball is Siaki. Down the right edge, another good carry. This time, Vako Takalaka. To the right, Pafailangi. Launches it high. A testing one at the back here, taken quite brilliantly too because he was turning his back and making sure if he did drop the ball at the back that he'd be able to shoot at least get it back, Iwaka. The both teams testing each other out here at Harold Moody Park. This is the quarterfinal of the ARL Fox Premiership coming at you through ARL TV. The skill set from the stream shop bringing you the action. That's great to see our uh, footy out and about again too. And big ups to the ARL have given a lot of coverage to various clubs throughout the course of the season. They don't necessarily play all the top games. It's important that the teams are able to see themselves on the run, on the screen. Here they come. Glenora Bears, skillful, slick at the moment. And this is Moses Aceta. Got a ton of pace too. Played plenty on the wing over the course of his career. Lua Faliola, ton of experience there as well. As Fire Money once again carries it through and sets them 25 metres out from the try line. Tippins, step and straighten here from Sampson. Hard to contain. Nice little ball here. It's all Iwaka once again, and it's come back the Bears way, and another left foot kick in towards the end goal. This is a try, I think. This is a try that's come up out of nowhere. Kalia Iwaka. Puts the ball up and then fumbled at the back. Try number two. And the Glenora Bears starting in the best possible fashion. Yeah, 
I think it's Faramani who scored that, the man from Manly Seagulls. And Glenora Bears are just playing too fast for Tiaratu at the moment. I think Tiaratu really got to get locked in on their defence, especially run the ruck. Also under the high ball. Clever little kick there through from Moses. The setter into the end goal. It couldn't be handled at the back by Cheney. And uh, Faramani's come through and really able to pick up a try without having to do very much at all. What's this fire money? It's unfortunate for Delaney Cheney. He was man of the match last week, made team of the week last week, and had a really good game from what the coaches told me. And unfortunately there, just fumbles that ball in the end goal. But like all good players, snuffing around the ball. Fire money, gets the try. Takes the points out to 10-0. And Moses has said it was um, a clever left footer. Just weighted it perfectly too into the end goal. It just eluded Cheney. And, of course, smoking through on it and picking up the try of fire money. Good to see here. Great start for the Glenora Bears. But a cloud cover at the moment. We had a beautiful morning here in Auckland, but there's some threat of rain this afternoon. Hopefully the game will conclude before that comes along. And unsuccessful with the conversion is, uh, is set so it remains at 10-0. And really, at the moment, they're just playing with, with pace and skill. That's two Roosters struggling to go with them at the moment. Yeah, the Roosters really need to lock in on their on their defence efforts around that ruck area. They're losing it at the moment. Uh, if they don't lock in on that defensive side, it could be a long, long day for them. Okay, boys, pop your The 10-0 scoreline here. Just 11 minutes gone. Such a vital clash here in the Battle of the Westies. It's Samson. Solid player. You know, very consistent. Doesn't make very many mistakes and always carts solidly with a bit of attitude, a bit of swagger. He's the best player in New Zealand, Komar, when he's fit and he's mentally in the game. Along with this guy here, Chase Bernard. So they've got some really good players in depth here at Glenora. Yeah, Chase has been exceptional over the years. Wonderful, wonderful footballer. Tippins senses there's more damage to be done down the left edge and here's Raul Buchanan pops the ball late out the left of James Tomata weaves his way back in field chapter two under the pump here they need some possession so they need to force a turnover here is the big number eight Russell Falangi makes another good play oh they're on the roll at the moment aren't they here with another towering punt it's going to be awkward to take and it's across the touchline too. Tanatu really just haven't had any possession that they can make something of. I think Tanatu knocked that into touch too. If I could be Glenora Ball. Let's have a look here as it comes Olivetti. down. In for Olivetti's hand. So Glenora's got the ball. setting themselves now for another tilt. Well, this would be a real nail in the coffin. I tell you what, if they're able to get try number three in such short time as Chase Bernard takes it in. Tutter two. Not quite knowing where to look, where to defend as Tippins pushes it out quickly. Kingy gets the ball on and a charge towards the line is halted, but only just on Daniel Raleigh Buchanan. Quick play the ball. Tippins and another try. They're coming thick and fast. Solomon Vasuvalangi has been called back though, but the intent quite obvious here with the Glenora Bears are playing the game at 100 miles an hour. Oh, they're in fine form, aren't they? They've had the week off working on combinations. Like their coach said, they've, they've been working on things that no one's been watching or no one's seen yet, and that might have been one of those plays he's talking about. Unfortunately, called forward by the touchy. As I say, great crowd here this afternoon. Plenty on the line here. The Peninsula peeps. Out here against the Glen Eden lads. Breaking rights for the best club out west. A lot of changes coming in. Tell two roosters. As we've heard, opting not to take any sponsorship from bars or pokies. Big ups to Tefano Wopadela too, who are in their corner in 2022. 
Solid D2 as they try and claw their way back. The ball's been lost though in the tackle. And now in the corner, that'll be try number three. Well, look at this. They're absolutely killing it out wide and the locals here at the home of the Bears. Absolutely stoked with the performance so far. Yeah, the Bears, they're just muscling up. They're just in such good form at the moment. And they've started this game really fast. The way you want to play finals, you want to start fast. And unfortunately, Tera 2, they're in all sorts at the moment. I think they're a little bit shell-shocked. And Glenora Bears are just dominating this game through their physicality. And there was Yoaka with the big hit. And Tomata diving in the corner. Scores a beautiful try. Well, they've got to look at themselves, really, the Roosters, because it's been from areas that they have made. Okay, the first one was a, a beautiful take from the fullback. But this time around, the ball was spilt. And uh, they're looking down the barrel at the moment here. And they really have to do something quite special. But they're going to come back against a team now that's just high on confidence. And uh, James Tomata, well, he's no slouch. But the ball was shuffled across quickly. And uh, he was the recipient in the corner. I well, we saw a big comeback, too, in the last game. So it's early days. But to be down 14-0 in... Um, as many minutes. It's going to make life tough here for the Roosters here in this corner final coming to you live from West Auckland. Yeah, 100%. I think the, the score was 24-10 to Glenora in the, in the last game and then a converted try right on full time got them to extra time and they end up taking the game. And that's a great kick again from Sarah. Make that 16-0. Yeah, Sarah, that time around probably the left foot favours from that side of the field. What a start here we're witnessing. What a ARL start. TV. Let's have another look how it came to be. Well, this is perhaps the end of it too as Tomata gets the ball delivered up nicely from Chas Brown. They're missing three key players. Today is Glenora, one being Zorpe Kavaluku. This would have been his 100th game. He's out with a knee injury. Fullback Wyatt Rangi is out with a groin injury. And then Dean Coker Smith also out injured. Really testing the depth. Well, if anyone can get them focused, it's Uppy Piffai and he's been around the traps. They just need to create an opportunity for themselves. Tackle number one here for the Bears. Three tries up early on in this clash. As the Roosters realise it just got to up the ante, up the enthusiasm with their defensive work, and they come away with the football here in good field position and a good chance best chance so far for the roosters yeah that's twice they've made a mistake after scoring points glenora it's fire money gets hammered in that tackle not too sure if joseph price had a hand in there and that's just a loose carry well done to attitude now it's over to koro pefarangi to try and get them back into this game that's some great defense there to force the error from to joe to might be joe price as well at the back there's the chance that Teata two have been waiting for with Reese Joyce on the feed. Important that they get to the back end of the set. First tackle to ground. Ralu across the top of the lead. defensive work. The fighting slides across into dummy half. Here's the charging run too. With the big number 20. Back row Price. He's nailed. 15 from the line. Maipi looking up. To the left, Joyce. Now, Kalani Pufarang and Charlie. Again, Uppy. Well, here's a chance down the right edge. It's if they can capitalize here. The chip over the top, and it eludes everybody. So, the restart will be for the Glenora Bears. Yeah, Reese Joyce just got that kick wrong there, and I think that's been the difference of the team so far. Yoaka's kicking game has been keeping Glenora in this match, and so far, two repeat sets, or two get-out-of-jail sets for Glenora just off their kicking game. Here's Moses Hesera. Tippins. Again, Vasa Valangi is proving himself to be a, a real thorn of the side here for Tata 2 at the moment. 
Takes it effort now, Delaney Cheney with work to do. And set her up, then straighten up, almost bust through. He does indeed. Delaney flying now. The left edge. What a run from the fullback. Wanting to make amends for a couple of little errors early in the match. Iwaka with the football. Coming up to quarter game time. Big scoreline, 16 0. But the other two are starting to fight their way back into the game. Dummy half work for Olivetti. Wants to quick play the ball. Now he's got it. To the right in Pefairangi. Here's the wind up from Mihinui. And look at the defensive effort here from Raleigh, Buchanan, and Bernard. Solid and too tough. Other two with an opportunity. Let's have another look at Cheney's run, return of the football. Crossfield and then straightened. Yes. Comes through there, spots a gap. Works really hard. Good leg drive there from Delaney. He's come over from the North Coast Tigers, as Delaney Cheney. Now, unfortunately, here, Devontae Mihunui, the young fella, he hasn't been playing Fox long. He played against the, the Tigers Cubs a couple of weeks ago. For the Warriors under 18s, and unfortunately, he drops the ball. It's going to be good learnings for him moving forward. So now it's really important for the Roosters that they focus on their defensive effort. Leg drive post contact. Solid. Cheney's in the mix as well, and the defensive work. Here they come, the Bears, hungry for the football, hungry to make metres, and they're pulling them together swiftly. And with great skill, spinning effort here from Lua Fariano. What's funny? What's like about this bloke's uh, contribution so far in the game? Yeah, Vasavalangi, the New Zealand Māori residence prop, former Tatatū rooster, very good player. As he looks to sub off there. Nora, hot on the attack through Tippins. And now it's to Bernard. Slips on the surface, keeping it alive. Here's Iwaka, gets the kick across. The bounce is going to be important. Chaney does get hold of it this time around. And referee seeing something that he's unhappy with. Obviously not giving the man at the back enough room. So a penalty and a welcome penalty for the Roosters who can... Sucking some of the big ones too. They've been really under the pump over the last five or seven minutes. Yeah, the other two needed that. They were under the pump and uh, they look very tired. Hands on hips at the moment. So they just need to get a bit of energy to go towards them. Olivetti. Good players, Peter Olivetti. He needs to inject himself in this game along with Reese Joyce. Man, they played half for the Cook Islands in the rep round a couple of weeks ago. Good to have you back to Wader. He, the young fella's going pretty well at his debut in Jersey Fleet uh, for the St George Dragons. So yeah. be, uh, you'll be a proud dad. Oh, very proud moment. Went over there and got to watch him play, make his debut for St George Dragons. Um, unexpected, but he, he's pushing his way into that team. As you can see, I've got the expert know it all. Oh, well, well. Stuff, I don't know who wrote that about you. <laughs> I, I bet it wasn't your mum. Oh, I think it was Chucky, actually. Here's the little kick through from Pefai Dungi. At the back, he's taking it from it's on uh, Iwaki. Doesn't need to do very much. They're in control on the scoreboard. They just need to be steady here. Nice effort from Chaz Brown. Recognises that a conservative carry will do the trick at the moment. Out of dummy half, also picking up some good metres again. Winger Tomata, try scorer. Brown again, so just wanting to get through to the back end of their sets. Tony Benson has been around the footy scene for a long time, former coach of our national women's team. Plays some great football as an athlete himself. He's running around with our teams on the north time. It's just really good to see him still involved in the game and loving what he's doing with the Glenora Bears. Downtown they go this time around. It's taken there by Moses Tuivovua. Yeah, really liking the style Glenora's playing at the moment. They seem to be hitting a little bit wider off the ruck and they're catching Tata too well. There's a forward pass there from Cortez Taulu. It's unlucky there. They seem to be in a bit of shock as uh, Tata at the moment. Down the right edge again.
Well, I hope you're enjoying the action here. As I say, it's quarterfinal time. The crowd certainly are enjoying themselves. So is the DJ. He's <laughs> I think the DJ is uh, Dion Pesco. He's on the on the back of one of these jerseys. Great club man for Glenora Bears. Here we go with the Glenora Bears. Straightening on the run to Iwaka. He's already had an outstanding opening here as we come to the last 15 of this first half. Three tries scored for the Glenora Bears. Here comes Aceto once again. Been around for a while as well, this guy. And so he gets it within eight metres of the try line. So it's Tippins. Big long pass. Up the middle they come this time through fire money. Collected a try. After a little mistake in the end goal here from the Roosters. Really under the pump once again. Charging towards the line, the big number 10, Samson. He's just a metre out from the try line. And the referee will call that a penalty. Up by 16 to nil. They decided that they'll keep going with it. He'll call it back to for the restart. Yeah. They're looking really good as the Bears and Komar Samson. He's setting the platform along with this guy here, Chase Bernard. So it'll be interesting to see what they do here with they sit in their 50 and then attack the short side. There's a good vibe going on in this Bears camp at the moment. They've had a great season. And they're just showing how dominant they've been. Just the one loss in 2022. And at the moment, seems like that the team to beat here this afternoon. Little knock on suggested there is Isami Iwaka goes to ground. And that's the way the referee sees it too once he gets a glance across from his touch judge on the sideline. Yeah, unfortunately there for Isami Iwaka. He just drops his ball as his brother goes through the block play at the back. He trips up, lands on the ball and unfortunately loses it there. Rich Joyce points it out to the touchy. He'll be happy as. Good to have you along. Four quarterfinals going across the city. We'll see if we can update some of the score lines from other games for you as the game progresses. 13 to play here, 16 to nil. The score line, chapter two. They really haven't had too many opportunities here. The Glenora Bears have been hot on attack and on defense in this battle of the Westies. Fight trying to marshal his troops. Down the short side, 17's Johnny Sully. Unable to get further than just a few metres. Really dominating the ruck is Glenora. Nihinui. Wrapped up here by the back row of Bernard. He's been hot on defence and on attack. Sully Vaka is in the mix. Again, that's taken beautifully at the back by Iwaka. Trying to weave his magic through the left edge. Down the left corridor he goes. Wonderful in flight. And a beautiful return of the football and earning a penalty as well. After that scintillating run that picked up 30 metres. He's from Iwaka. He's going white. Ruggy who? And showing everyone how good he is as a fullback. And no wonder he's been picked up by Queensland Cup. As I think Cortez Taulu came in with a flop there. Just an interesting note there with Cortez. He looks up at his old teammate from Alice Eagles, Eagles, Vigo Rasmussen, as he blows the penalty. Like, who me, sir? It's always going to be the way with the man in charge of the proceedings. Up the middle comes Fire Money once again. Good, solid, structured play being delivered here by the Bears. Tough to take, Iwaka once again. That ball's gone backwards. Play on, says Rasmussen. The Roosters supporters don't agree, but there's been a knock-on, and I'm guessing it's going to be a Roosters feed here. We'll see if he goes back to original. He's, he's hit back to six on the first drip. No, he's given it to Tiaratu, so they get out of jail there. Well, the Tatatu Roosters, as I say, just... Working on the culture of their club, read a lovely article too about wanting to be family friendly. And so certainly acknowledging where they've brought this club through over the years. I think they were club of the year last year too, the awards night. They're doing a great job. I know a few of the players, they've all said 
They won the Premiership, of course, back in 1988. And uh, notable players there, Peter Brown and Sam Punapa, Mark Hoddle, Ronnie O'Regan, Henry Paul, the list goes on. Saw Peter Brown walking around the field earlier. Some great players over the years. Bit of an update, too, as we come to 10 minutes out from half time. At the moment, the Pirates are leading the Lions 18 12. These games all kicked off slightly before our game because of the delay, because of the extra time in reserve grade. Uh, the Glenora Bears obviously up 16 0. Otaku, who 14 12 across Richmond as we speak. And it's a 12 6 scoreline as well. Well, that's from the Marlins today. You'll be uh, pleased about that. They're playing the Hibiscus Coast uh, Raiders. Uh, no results so far through from. Howick and Bay Roswell today. Good to have you along. You're watching quarterfinal, one of, here on ARL TV. But they weathered the storm, the barrage that was the reality for them, the Roosters, in that opening 20 minutes. Can they build themselves back into the game? Now they have a chance with ball in hand as Olivetti lines up a runner. Cullen Clyde, an acting half now. See if Clyde can uh, inject some energy. He's a very good runner of the ball, is Clyde and Clyde. That's him with the ball. Chaney sends it back up on the inside. Royden Gillett. Royden wanted to get himself uh, involved here. But that's some solid D again. The defensive work here from the Glenora Bears this afternoon has been nothing short of exceptional. And the commitment they've shown from the whistle. It's been superb. Beautiful to have you with us here. And I know a lot of these guys have got rel relatives uh, across country and, of course, overseas. Good thing about the ARL format is that once it's posted up on YouTube, it's there and you don't have to be there right on time. You can watch it while you're eating your cornflakes or late at night before you duck in for a snooze. Tippins. Jess Brown, your man handled on the far side of the field. Eight and a half to play here. Three tries so far. Iwaka and Fai Money, and of course Tomata. Launching it as Iwaka, that's high. Is it handsome? We'll wait and see where the bounce goes. It's pretty handsome, all right. Don't you worry about that. And it's still a runner on the inside. As the center threads the needle and just pushes it a little bit heavy or no, but in fact, it's perfect. Well, that's twice now I've seen uh, a center with a, a late option to just drill the ball along the ground. So it's a setting a great platform for his runners, and they'll get another set of six. So it's still tough times. Plenty of height on the ball. Yeah, it's had it to Roosters. They're letting the ball bounce. The, the back three have got to be better than that. And that's what happens when you let the ball bounce. You invite misery to your life, as Phil Gould says. And unfortunately, there, Cortez Taulu. He gets wrapped up pretty easy. And Glenora get back-to-back -back sets if they get this kick. Short kickoff is the option. And it worked. Seemed to go okay for them. Royden Gillett's in there. And now it'll be Tarotu Roosters with the ball. ARL TV. Bringing you the action here from Harold Moody Park. If you've just joined us this afternoon on the live stream coverage. Quarter final time. And the Fox. And a wonderful crowd on hand here at the ground and no doubt thousands watching in as well. Well, the Fox Premiership, the pinnacle of club rugby league here in Tamaki Makoto. Some might say right across the country as the Roosters again. Have to find their way out with Cortez Daulu. This time it was just a little high. Cortez has had worse than that delivered to him through his career, I know that. But even so, trying to eradicate that from the game, it's Pefai Lungi. Looks towards the eastern touchline here. We're broadcasting from the western touchline. That's yeah, good work from Cortez Talu. Spent a bit of time at Canberra Raiders, Ellerslie Eagles and Mount Albert. Found a home at Tatatu now and he just tapped that off his knee and I don't think he can do that. You seem to weave Ellerslie Eagles into your commentary quite regularly there. Huh? Well, a lot of the, the good players from the Eagles <laughs> left to, to go to... Uh, Fox Memorial Clubs, you know, uh, Chaz Brown's another one out there. 
So good shout out to that junior club that doesn't provide a premier team anymore. Yeah, it's been fantastic over the years. So come and Clyde again. This time he opts to go to the right. It's a drop off and back up on the inside here. Pifai Lungi trying to steer the ship. As you can see there, just on 35 out from the line. Here's a darting run from dummy half. And another penalty as well, even the, the decision is questioned by the back rower. Yeah, player taken without the ball here. So I think Joseph Price gets taken without the ball. And that's good work from Kalan Clyde. I want to see that more from that from Kalan. Young man played for the Warriors 18s against the Tigers Cubs earlier this year. Didn't get to show his running game, but he's got a very, very strong running game, does Kalan Clyde. This is a really important period, this five minutes before the halftime break. If the Roosters were able to get across, they'd get themselves well and truly back into the game. Clyde into dummy half. Has a look on the right side. This time the carries in the big 10. Bucko, Dakakala. Apologies to the back rower now. That's Joe Price. Also had a couple of stints with the Warriors through their 20s. Back in the day. Nice little ball and good offload. This is Gillette. This has gone across the line. Did he get it down though? The question is. I think Roy has got there. Well, that's just what the doctor ordered here for the Roosters. Sure is, Dale. They needed that try to get back into this game. They, they seem to be lacking a bit of energy. So hopefully that'll give them a bit of energy just before half time and maybe they can get another one. But the NRL rookie, Roy and Gillett, good to see the old fella. He went out fishing yesterday, he got home safely. Gets Tatatu back into the game. He's another really good player, Rodin Gillett. When he's fit and strong, he's one of the best players in the comp. Well, it was a deserving try here for the Roosters. They conceded three early in the game, but they certainly haven't uh, dipped their heads at all. Here's young Royden. And that'll build confidence here for the Roosters coming into the second half. Well, we mentioned how important that last few moments uh, before the halftime break is. And in the end, it was the spin that allowed him to get across the top, despite the efforts of Kari Aioka to uh, make the tackle. It was just all leg drive. All leg drive and strength from Rodin Gillett. He's a tough man. Been around the traps a while now. It's Koro Pifarangi. Tries to convert the extras. These two points are going to be important in this scheme of things. Let's see how Uppy handles this opportunity. He raises the flag 16 to 6, the scoreline here. Great to have you along. And well, that's what this is about. It's the tussle, it's the local derby, it's bragging rights in West Auckland. These two teams certainly want to advance to the semi next year. As we, next week, as we see the effort again. Fine try. Plenty of defenders around him as well, including a setter. They just couldn't keep him back. Beautiful grove of eucalypt trees here. Under the feature of the Harold Moody Park. Looking for the restart here from Phil Kingy. Fields a really good nick. So now the Roosters. No mistake, football is what their coach Phil Gordon will be expecting from them. The Johnny Sully. Good defensive work as we'd expect from Rowley Buchanan. They'll be aware there's not much time on the clock here, so it's mainly that they don't concede any points, so a decent kick off the back end of this six is going to be vital. Yeah, it seemed that Lenora seems to be winning this ruck. It's slow play the ball, so I think the attitude need to fix that up in the second half to get right back into this game. Taken nicely at the back by this talented ball runner, Yuaka. Yeah, it was a beautiful try to start off the game too when he climbed high and plucked it out of the air. Delaney Chaney was waiting for the ball to come down, then flashing through the air was Iwaka to score that first try. In style to the halfway. Great pick up and go here from Tippins. Keeps the ball alive on the left side. 
defensive work on the far side from Tui Vovoi. Kingy. Bernard. The big men are involved. Far money this time. Shuts off one. They've got to be on guard here. Joe Price across the top. On D. It's the last tackle in the set. And it's the last minute of the first half here in the quarterfinal. Trying to thread the needle now. The bounce important. And in the end, the Roosters come away with it at the back. So vital that that ball was taken. This Ooh. man's had plenty of good runs here today. Yeah, poor Rhys Joyce. He got bumped off by Fire Marnie. He's already having nightmares from the test match where Josh Schuster ran all over him. He asked me not to bring that up. He said, please don't bring that up, but I thought I'd better get it in there. Oh, uh, well, you'll be buying your own beers later, that's for sure. <laughs> I would think they wait. He's a good man, Rhys Joyce. Just announced he's about to have another baby, so congratulations to him and his partner. You seem to know everything. Do you know his mother's maiden name? Uh, it's uh, Reset, I think it is. Okay, thanks for it. 16 6 scoreline here. Hope you're enjoying the action. It's quarterfinals of the ARL Fox Premiership, and it's coming to you live on ARL TV. Three tries to one. We'll take a break, come back and show you through those tries as we celebrate Rugby League in Auckland's West. 16 6 scoreline at the break. From last night's training, dude run harder, tackle with intention, make one the gaps and watch for interceptions. Keep it fair, keep it cool, every section. If you're all past the ball, put your best in. Enjoy your day's trip, you cover your selection. This the thing that you've been missing. Oh boy, don't play rugby It's all yeah. You are your club, come on!
Kia ora Anoa and welcome back to 166 scoreline. It's been an exciting encounter here as we try and sort out uh, who will go through to next week's semi finals in the Fox Premiership. Uh, three tries scored, the first of them didn't take very long at all as we see the teams in the huddle. We can have a look at the tries as they came out through that first 40, and it was within the first couple of minutes. And this occurred. This was the first set of play, and the ball comes back here uh, before it's launched up off the foot of Iwaka, and it's his brother who comes steaming through from fullback to claim the prize. Yeah, that's a beautiful kick from his brother. He's putting up those Matt Burden bombs today, and he comes through and scores that with ease. That's the second try here. That's a fumble. Tap back, Isetta has good foresight to just tap it through with his left foot and again Cheney couldn't control and uh, coming through the score there was fine money. This is try number three and again another mistake. So two errors and within about 16 minutes of play it was 16 points to nil. This is the fourth try of the half and it was scored just before the half time break. It's so important that it was too because it gives the Roosters some hope coming back into the second half. Great to have you along on those tries early in the game. Really drew a lot out of the uh, uh, defence. Nice to see the young fellow in the middle there. It's Trent Rothel. He's 40 now. He's been running the tee out for the touch to Roosters for 20 years now, Trent. And uh, that's neat commitment from his father, as you can see. Words being exchanged, encouraging words coming in here from the uh, Roosters. Yeah, Rodin Gillett is giving some uh, encouragement there. He'll be trying not to swear because he knows the camera's on him. Charity Roosters, they know they just need to get back to basics, win that ruck, play a little bit faster, and I think if they can do those little things, they'll get themselves back into this game. A bit like the reserve grade team, they can take some inspiration from them. They came from down from a big deficit, won the game in extra time. Look, it's anyone's game at the moment. Wade Brinston with us today, and uh, of course, half time scores from around the grounds. We don't have all of them, but it's uh, locked up at 18 all. Point Chevalier against Mount Albert, and Otago, who 14 12 over Richmond as we speak but uh, they'll be underway with their second half already because we had a delayed start out here out at the uh, west Hibiscus Coast and Manorewa possibly Papatoitoi also in the mix and Wade's got his trusty pocket computer he's uh, out there sorting out other score lines, any updates there as we see Tefano White Potato proud sponsors here of the Tatatu Roosters Big ups to all of our supporters over the years. From Neil Ave and Jack Colville Park, of course. Proud home grounds of the Roosters outfit. Pleased to have you with us here this afternoon. As you can see, a ton of interest around the banks today. There's a smaller crowd here, but the side that we're broadcasting from was a stack of people as well. Happy to be on screen. Well, some are, not all. <laughs> it's Phil King about to get us underway. A deep consultation with Radio Buchanan. It's the hottest ref in Australasia. Vigo Vigorous Rasmussen. Oh, well, he does, does a bit of modelling, I know. But uh, fair enough, you can make a quid however you can do it. Yeah, apparently when they were over in Aussie, that was his nickname. The hottest referee. They spent a bit of time over in Aussie. The Auckland Rugby League staff did and learned a few tricks off the Penrith Panthers. Fair enough, too. Big hats, uh, hats off. Big ups to our refereeing fraternity. The game can't continue without the willingness of those to be involved in the administration. And also, I'm bringing the games forward. Now, this is John Sully in jersey number 19. He's listed at 17, so apologies for not calling his action. He's had a strong first half and will need to play strong two in the second. Here's Joe Price with the ball. Down with okay. Shane Hannon, who's in the mix now. He's a, a, a solid performer too, Shane. So the kick downtown. Taking it to the back by Iwaka. Good follow-up defensive effort from Kalan Clyde. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great start from Teddy to the second half. They really need to work hard to get back into this game. 
as Kalan Clyde, he brings that energy. I love that about Kalan. He comes on and brings energy. Here he goes again. He's just made his third tackle in a row. Really working hard to get his team back into this match as the young fella. Right in front of the posts here. Want to play a steady hand at the moment. It's a penalty. That'll help the home team. It's unfortunate there again. Tiara too, they're working really hard. But unfortunately, in that third tackle, they just jumped the gun there. Wanted to get in the mix. If I don't need to lead by uh, example here from the Roosters. They know the importance once again of this period at the start of the second half. They were hit hard. Like a Mack truck by the attitude that the home team brought to the start of the clash here this afternoon. Well, you can count it. Easy to pick out. Good running style too. Great defender too, Daniel. Bernard now looking for something up the outside here is Iwaka. That's the second time of knock on really at the dummy half roll for Mosia Seta. Yeah, I think he tried to milk that the Mosia with uh, Rich Joyce lying there in the ruck, but unfortunately, referee Vigo Rasmussen decided that it wasn't. See here, there, we'll see it. Yeah. But it's these fundamental errors that are real coach killers. They sure are. They invite the attitude back into this game. They'll afford to make mistakes here. It's so important that their focus is sharp. Both teams. And certainly when you're down on the scoreboard by 10, you want to get away to a good start of it. They're really enjoying Sully's effort here this afternoon. Time for the big men to put their input in. Tracks holding up beautifully here, this Arvo. Very, very slow ruck speed there, Dale. Yeah, the play of the ball has been a little sluggish, there's no doubt. Russell top good defence here from Kelly Eight. Side for trying to find touch on the far side of the field now the bounce at the back here it's picked up by Luafalealo good chase as well for the Roosters trying to put some pressure on at the back Luafalealo up to play the ball this is better from Tiara too great defence so the Roosters starting the second half with a bit of style Out wide, trying to create an opportunity down the left edge for James Tomata. He's got wheels, James. He's flying at the moment. Scragged in the end by Joel Volvoa. Good run from the outside man. Now it's to Chase Brown and on to Daniel Lou Buchanan. What a tackle there. But as he managed to get across the try line, they'll be questioning it. And the tackle was absolutely superb. I thought Rowley was there for all money. Yeah, so did I here in the way. Bit of a throw the body in the front there from Delaney Cheney. And he comes up with a try save, and that's good work from the fullback. He's not a big man, Delaney, but he got down low and hard, chopped him up. It was dead set flying, Daniel, there. It's a crikey. It's, it took a tackle and a half to hold him out. Five into the second half, no extra points on the scoreboard. 16 to 6. Three tries for one. Roosters just trying to get into the arm wrestle at the moment. It's a real tussle up through the middle here as Joseph Price comes a, into battle with Far, far Money. Once again, it's a slow play the ball though. Yeah, well, that's a lot to do with Glenora's technique. Big uh, Siwali Vaka is in the mix. And jersey number 16, easy to pick him out too because he's got the afro. Yeah, Vaka has come with big reps. I was talking to coach Tony Benson before the game. He said Vaka's come up from Hamilton to, and he's made the most of his opportunity. And here's another chance for the Roosters. Shouldering the chasing runner away. And Rasmus is not going to have any of that. Joyce uh, with the ball. Let's get another look at it. Let's go, 
50-50. So now, the Roosters. Looking to be the next to score. Sully takes the tap. Pifayrangi now. Clyde. Price. Taken by his opposite number. In good field position. Yes, Clyde holds it up nicely on the, on the far side. Finds Reese Joyce. Going to ground Cheney. A little bit clunky here from Tera 2. Clamora dominating the ruck in the tackle. Now up down the left side, trying to create something into the corner here. It's Olivetti. And the crossfield bomb. Haven't seen this so far today. Taken by Sully. Gets away from one. Can't free his arms up. And is driven towards the line it's a turnover but gee he's been good the number 19 got so close that time around and almost able to capitalize on what was a skillful kick across field the Glenora Bears have the ball now just a few meters out from their own line Chas Brown to his feet but the referee will ask to come back come on back and start it again quarter final Fox Premiership A bit of a tussle on here. There's Sully. Desperate effort from Tomata. And look how close he came. Just a half a half a meter or so away. He has a better kick from Reese Joyce. In the first half he, he put a couple dead. And he put one in a position that put Glenora under threat. Um, lucky for Glenora, Phil Kingy came up with a big tackle. It looked like a punch for on there. Maybe from Joseph Cross. Yeah. Referee having a couple of words with the skippers. Can you provide a called out? Tell the boys to settle down. Yep, we know it's a quarter final, fellas. But Two former Mount Albert teammates there Joseph Price and Chaz Brown. Sure. Sitting in Mount Albert have been involved in the careers of so many of our top players, but good to see them. Changing clubs from time to time, too. The scrag tackle. The Bears. Not as dominant as they were, certainly, in the opening exchanges of the first half. This time it's Vaka to play the ball. With Tippins, again, relying on their experienced back rowers. They settle things down and. Another string to the bow of Zach Tippins. Good passing game. Good running game, but at times, too, he can just break away from dummy half, get a kick away. Cheney is taken at the back here for the Roosters. That's told. Cortez driven towards the touchline. And while it looked encouraging when he first took possession. Yeah, Tui Vovor. Oh, Tui my apologies. Tried a little bit too much there, Dale. This one his team needs to get back into this game. Unfortunately, tries to go around them. Tomata's a speedster, and he's strong. Another look at it. It looks as though something was opening up for him, but Tomata gave him a little room on the outside and drove him towards the touchline with support there from Phil Kingy. Yeah, I think the, the house from Te Aritu really need to start standing up now. Putting their team into a better position. Hope you enjoyed the action. Brought to you by ARL TV Stream Shop. As well in the mix. That's also the Crown of Trucks and all the supporters, Farrelly Photos. Many others have supported the Auckland Rugby League and indeed our coverage throughout 2022. This compressed season under review at the moment all of the stakeholders interested parties coming together to see how we might shape the fox of 2023 once it's locked in it'll be here for the next three years here's shane hannon with the football good field position here for the bears they haven't been down this end of the track for a while bernard again with his experience and power and leg drive gets him nicely in front of the posts out to kingy has a thought about inside then Ralu buchanan 
cut down beautifully by Sully in the defensive effort in front of the posts. The Bears on the roll here. Bernard on the chase, and he's close to the line. Out to the right-hand side. Numbers using the ball beautifully. Out to Moses Isera, and he opens the door on the far side to Lua Falealo. That is class play from the Glenora Bears. And it's the first try of the second half. They extend their lead with a kick to come from out wide. Brilliant effort from a setter to load it up for Lua Falealo. Yeah, lovely work from Glenora Bears. They, they're really finding joy on their right edge when they, they sort of set on their 30. And then they go through the trio shape as they sit here close to their try line. And they're finding joy out on this right-hand side. Jorka, beautiful cut out pass there to Asira, and Asira with the flick pass. And Simon Lulafil scores a beautiful try. The nephew of uh, Kevin and John Senio, Simon, comes from good bloodstock, started his career at Maris, New Zealand resident. Really good player. A good Simon. player. And a good bloke to Simon. I bumped him last week, briefly uh, out watching the. Mount Albert all tell game. But uh, yeah, the guts too to our Marist supporters. They've brought through some fabulous players over the years. Simon, a long time contributor there. The green and gold, but that was some smart work too. They just sensed the opportunity. But let's uh, pay tribute too to Chase Bernard. He set the play up really beautifully, going in low, close to the posts. And that allowed them some space out wide, which was well utilised. Especially with that effort from Aceto, which was super skillful to load up there for Simon down the right edge. So, 20 points to six, our scoreline here in the quarterfinal. Take some real skill that pass. To be able to do that under pressure is not easy. Clever play, wasn't it? It was, and he really sucked in Cortez Tolu. Didn't need to come in and help there and shut the door. Cortez came in, opened up that gate. Seem to be lacking a little bit of energy here as Territory Roosters, so they really need to focus on the first three tackles here, Dale, and get back into this game. It's a long way home for them. It's not undoable, that's for sure, but a few things are going to have to go their way. The bounce of the ball. Confidence is up like this for the home team and with a big crowd on hand as well to support their efforts it's going to take a massive effort here from the Roosters to run them down Hannah again with the football and another penalty so they'll get good field position off the back of it as well yeah Shane Hannah very very good player as well from what I understand talking to the coach earlier today he actually tuned up just to help with numbers but he's enjoyed it that much he stayed on and he's ha having a really good season yeah, well, the Glenora Bears have got, you know, the culture within the club, the camaraderie within the club is, is really uh, well documented. Guys who come here enjoy playing at Harold Moody and for the club. There are plenty of schoolboy, junior, footy, footy players. Very proud club. And at the moment, they're making life tough here for their West Auckland counterparts, the Tatatu Roosters. Again, in good field position to mount another challenge. This time it's Vaka. He goes forward powerfully. Price downstairs on the tackle up top is Big Finne. Stepping on the inside here, Iwaka manages to get the pass away. Danger time here for the Roosters too, and that's a reach out for the try line. I thought for a moment it was in there for Isam Iwaka. Yeah, I thought he put it down short, and uh, Coach ref Referee Viga Rasmussen agrees. But the Iwaka brothers there, job, absolutely carving this game up. Well, it's denied, but there certainly wasn't much in it, was there? And again, bro to bro, here we go. As you get another look, as you say, Wade, just, you know, a few millimetres short of the line, but, gee, that would have made life coming back super tough, but it's not tough enough already. 14 down on the scoreline here. 25 to go, plenty of time. Yeah, I think Teatitude really got to win this ruck and get a bit of speed at the play the ball as they seem to be dominators. I mean, we need a quick play the ball here. 
to evolve why with the carry, but the defensive work was good. Israeli Buchanan, defensive technique always very solid. Great contributor here. And those are good hands on show as well. That was a poor pass. Taken ankle high by the back rower. But one out running at the moment, easy, easily countered by this sort of defense. Solid D here on show from the Bears. They're really putting their grizzly sounds into the action. Lovely little break from Clyde. Clyde with the ball, he's isolated. Needs to find the teammate, but he couldn't quite link up. Good run, 50 meters here from Clyde. Pivai Lucky holds it nicely. Mihinui. Last tackle. That's what I mean, though. They need to speed to play the ball up for Kalani. He's so electric out of tummy half. He's having to make opportunities when they're going backwards, and I think if they can get him some front foot ball, Tarachi will get right back into this game. There's Vaka. To his feet. Tippins just stares it on, coming in to take some pressure off the forwards as Lofari Alo. Again, needing a turnover here. The Roosters recognise that. They need to keep the, the Bears contained. Well, that was too easy. The meterage anyway there for DJ uh, Deirdre Fangupo. But again, a turnover at good field position here for Tatatu. It's good contact here from Devontae Mahanui, I think it is. He comes over the top, whacks his shoulder in there. I mean, Joseph Price. Well, the defence really there of the of the ball carrier. There was a, a hand in there. It wasn't caught, but that's footy. They need all the smarts of Joseph Price to get back into this game, does Teddy too. Cheney defeat the scrum here now. 23 to play. 14 down. The Roosters. Little step. Straightening here. Reese Joyce wants to quick play the ball. That's still deli delivered up. Little skip hop. It's not a very kicks the ball. Crawling forward. Roosters. Need to make the most of this set. And possession. Here's Price. Now 15 out for the try line. Clyde wants to quick play the ball. It's delivered for him. Angling is Pefailangi. Towards the line, he gets the offload, and the finish is smooth. It's Devante Mihanui. And the Roosters say, we're not done with yet. Oh, that's beautiful work from oh, Kuro Pefailangi. Just like I was saying before, the older boys need to step up, and young Devante is only 17 years old. He gets a great try, the big man, out of Waitakere High School. Played for the Warriors last, a couple weeks ago for the Cub, against the Tiger Cubs. He's a good player, Devonte. Got a big future ahead of him. Good platform set by Joseph Price as well. Well, you're not wrong. And again, it was that late flick. It was the only possible play, too. We saw it from a setter setting up Lua Falealo a few moments ago. And that little trick that all kids practice time and time again in the backyard with their mates. Pays good dividends here for Upi Pefai Rangi, who I know you've nicknamed Kuro. Yeah, we call him the Koro because he uh, he teaches everyone the haka for New Zealand Māori Rugby League. So he came into the junior camps uh, earlier this year for the Pacific Cup and he taught the kids the haka and so we nicknamed him Koro and he actually likes that name. Oh, Kelly. He wouldn't be 30. <laughs> or would he be? He might be. Might be 30, you think? He's also a very good touch player out of Manawatu and I 100% reckon that's where he would have got that flick from as he converts it. We've got a game on our hands. It's 20 to 12 here now. And isn't that the way you want quarterfinal footy to be? Hats off to this young guy, Mihanui. It's so neat to see the emergence of young talent. And, you know, if you're good enough, you're old enough. That's a lovely sight too. Papa and his young fella out enjoying the rugby league here. Yeah, Mihanui started the year in uh, territory reserve grade, so it's good to see his progress his way through and... And obviously, Coach Phil Gordon, he will know that. That is a young fella, and he's brought him through nicely. Him and Kalan Clyde, uh, two two superstars of our future. I don't want to put too many expectations on them, but I do get your drift, bro. Here we go. So, the Roosters now. 
they feel they're in the game again. And why wouldn't they? They're down by 8, 20 minutes to play here in the quarterfinal. Harold Moody Park in Auckland's West. This guy's had a good game too, John Sully. Gets himself involved. I like what he does a lot. Bucko Takakala. Joseph Price. He's been like a force of nature in his own right, this bloke. He's just been working so, so hard. Pifaragi. Oh, lovely play at the back. Foot out. That was beautifully done. James Tomata. He's done some very good work today, but look at the thinking here. Gets his foot onto the sideline, just over the sideline. Absolutely perfect. Top draw effort. So now it's the Bears. Fang Hupo gets them with the football. Tippins, eyes darting up, right, left. Manages to load up for Vasavalangi. He's back in the mix. The big man rolling forward here. Setting the stage and the platform as Tippins wants to go on with it. Iwaka down the right edge. 15 out from the try line. They get a chance to hand short side. Look at the run here. It's Iwaka once again. Gets it on the inside this time. It's from the younger brother to the older brother. And Iwaka is into score. We've seen it in reverse. This time it's back at you. And it's Isam who loads up for Kariai. And Kariai's into score. Just what the doctor ordered for the Bears. Just what they didn't need the Roosters. Well, Isam, he's been outstanding in this game. Filling in for Wyatt Rangi at fullback. Wyatt will have a job on his hand getting the, his jersey back. As Look at Isam, he just beats tacklers with ease. Hands off to his brother. And he scores a beautiful try. And the crowd goes wild here. And like you said, Tattoo didn't need that. Going to be a tough road home in the last 20 minutes for, um, for the Roosters. Well, what we've spoken about, we've seen it a few times. Uh, when you score a try, you need to have a very, very solid backup set off the kickoff. And they just allowed the Bears to, to churn their way forward. But actually, let's uh, also pay tribute to Tomata's foresight uh, to put his foot out to get the ball and to have them down the other end of the field which was really where they were able to set up the play. But uh, these Iwaka brothers are slaying it out there today. It's so good. They just seem to play with time, a lot of time on their hands, and they're really carving up territory at the moment. There's the set out. His favourite side of the field. Pirates have kicked away from the Lions and the latest score... Uh, it looks as though Otaku and the Rovers still close at 14 to 12, so they're in a ding dong battle. The Pirates have kicked out the 34 18. The, the latest update we have for you here on the other quarterfinal games for the ARL this afternoon. Yes, yeah, still no score update from Howard and Bay Roskill. Bay should be a hit plenty there. The Marlins and the Raiders. Raiders really turning it on today. 32 to 10. They've been one of the improving clubs of 2022. They had a tough start, so congratulations to them. And I guess you'll be somewhat disappointed that the Marlins haven't performed better in this clash this afternoon. But uh, uh, they are a, uh, uh, a job in waiting because the Marlins are going to be, once again, I believe, the one day powerhouse again that should match the numbers of teams that they field each week. It's the biggest club in New Zealand. It really should be at the top echelon of our yeah. sport. Ho hopefully, Dale, uh, a lot of the local juniors don't get pinched, which is generally the case. A lot of kids come through rewa. The good ones usually get brought by the other clubs, uh, which is just the nature of our game. So, unfortunately, to them, they'll probably go down to Hobos, Hibiscus Coast today, where we covered a couple of weeks ago, and, and Jeremiah Pye is doing a really good job with them out there. Yeah, that was a really hearty outing, wasn't it, against, uh, was it Howick? Yeah, Howick. That was a very hearty outing from the, the boys from up the coast. Big ups to them. Proud club too. Yeah, I think I called that game with your son, actually. I think you did too, and uh, I, yeah, because I had COVID, and I was watching back home on the competes and really enjoyed it. I think you guys did a, a terrific job there that uh, afternoon. It was, uh, 
a proud dad. I say he should be. He's a great caller. He's got a good future here, son. Bit of a full pass there from Kingy. Just lost their connection there. Well, this could get away here unless the uh, Roosters are able to get hold of the ball. Those faces look as though they could have come across from the peninsula too. They didn't look overly happy with what they are witnessing. Especially after the beautiful comeback from the reserve grade team today. Well, that was solid as, wasn't it? That was a wonderful precursor to this encounter. But really, the damage was done in the opening 10 minutes or so. Three quick tries, 16-0. And the home team have been able to dominate ever since. Just two tries now to the Roosters. But they're well capable. Up in Pafarangi again, we need to get a little bit of flamboyance. You might as well throw, might as well throw caution to the wind. This is the last game of the year. You don't want to leave anything in the tank. And uh, here's the man who really is the one perhaps able to spark a late comeback here for the Roosters. Clyde's clever. We totally agree, Dale. The last thing you want is a shoulda, coulda, woulda. Need to throw caution to the wind. Here's a chance down that left edge, but still the Bears defenders have been strong. He's chaining, chimes in, then gets the ball through. The big number 20 comes surging towards the line. Has he done enough? No, he hasn't. That's great defence there. Zachariah Tippins got underneath there. I think this is Kevin Pifferangi Charlie. Sorry, Fano, we don't have his name. Well, we hope so. There were some late shuffles with jerseys, which can be frustrating from our end, but that's from yours as well. We don't think it's uh, the team's just uh, trying to pull a swifty on us. I think it's about jersey sizes, eh? I think it is. I think when you, you're coaching and you put them in number 17, you're not considering what size that jersey is. Sure. We know that's 17 final ball. Wow, that would have given them a real boost. Had, and we're assuming the 20 years, Pifai Lucky Charlie, had he been able to get across the line. And apologies to all the Fano connections if you know, we're getting these uh, a little askew. It certainly isn't deliberate. It's not like we've been seeing them on TV every week as well. It's, <laughs> so. Oh, he's done his leg there. Yeah, that was uh, was quite obvious. I don't, think, I don't think it was a Joseph Manu effort. <laughs> and that was something else, wasn't it? <laughs> there was something else. It was a good move, though. Well, he, uh, he did uh, just break down. So you're with Auckland Rugby League Television. Live streamed through Stream Shop. The action brought to you by Clown, Crown Lift Trucks. Farrelly photos and the uh, numerous sponsors. I haven't got them in front of me, all of them, but thanks to them. Glad it's just cramp. I thought Pity Olive Duty did something more serious then. Since now, with 14 point lead, 12 to play, the home team will think they have. One hand on the prize, and the prize really here is to advance into the semi-finals of this year's Fox. Compressed competition, one unlike we'll witness again, I suspect. But after two years of non-play through to the COVID dramas and debacles that we have uh, witnessed, here he comes again, this guy. Look out for him. Oh, we got to like this guy. I like him a lot. Good work too from Esau Miyawaka. You say he was player of, player of the year in the 20s. Well, I'm not surprised now. And the combo he's got with his bros just really set this encounter alight. We've got a, we've got a uh, medic in the middle. <laughs> Holy dooly. She ran the risk of getting bowled over too. The medic, that is. Here they come again, the Bears. Coma Sampson, direct with his running. Chase Bernard's waiting. They won't use him this time. They go to the right-hand side, and Luaka threads the needle. It's gone deep. But Chase was smart from Lua Faliaalo. 
Just a little bit heavy. Goal line dropout, is it? That's what uh, the guy's pointing to. Must have been a hand got to at first. I think if uh, Komar Sampson can score at that corner, he'll bring those supporters down. There's all his Kotahi Tanga rugby league teammates are here supporting him at the moment. Uh, the team to beat at the moment in the National Rugby League tournament. Kaliai gets the ball onto the centre again, and the centre is smart, but this time runs it too close to the sideline and is bundled out. Strike three, you're out. <laughs> That's the Glenora Eagles softball club. And the two supporters there. Oh, look, they can raise a smile even though their team is doing it tough. Wade Brimston in with us today. Thanks to uh, him and others for the efforts to bring alive our series, our tournament through the year. Yeah, mass massive number here to uh, the, the stream shop who uh, sponsor this format for us and be able to take this game around the world. As I know, a lot of NRL players watch this in their spare time, so big number here to them and Chuck and all his hard work that he does. And, his graphics he writes for us, Dale. Yeah, for real. I'm, I'm with you. And if you're watching from overseas, like me, like Wade, you know, just love park footy, love club footy. And of course, some will go on to uh, prominent professional careers. Many of these guys are okay not to have, as we see the Town of Two Roosters. And that's what we like about rugby league. Never, never, never give up. They're still on the heart. It's the fifth and final tackle, though. What will Pierre Fai do with the football this time around? He needs some support. He finds Clyde. Clyde puts it into the end goal, and it's taken at the back there by probably the most dangerous man on the field, Isomi Oaka. Yeah, I would have wanted to kick it to Isom with, uh, with a staggered line, that's for sure. Lua Falialo. Hey, Simon. Down the right. And he can jar the ball loose too, as I said. He's pretty contained in his effort. Looking for some room out wide. Here's the delivery to Tomata. The flying James Tomata. Pulled to ground in a desperate scrag tackle from Delaney Cheney. Plenty of willing workhorses. Sampson and Bernard powering their way forward here for the home team. Levi, lovely ball, bullet pass out wide to Asena, throws the dummy Asena, and that, that was good. Knocked on, double movement. I was about to say that was it, but that was good, it was a double movement right at the end. Good contribution from Levi. Through Iowaka again, and then onto the set. Has had a superb game here this afternoon. He has. Usually he plays on the wing, does Asira, and that's usually Isim Iowaka right there. He's been very strong as Asira. Asira reaches out after the ball touches the ground. That's a good call from Vigo Rasmussen. Double movement. But the attitude, they need to throw the ball around. Nothing to lose now. Yeah, they've got to give it to me out. This is the last of their season for 2022. It's been a good year. And they pulled something out of the fire. Here we go. Trying to create something on the right side. Look, it's a little offload. This is Mihinui and he's driven towards touch. Well, we've been singing his praises. Just a young guy, perhaps a little inexperience there and some disappointment extra across his face. Yeah, 100%. You can hear the boys telling him to get down, but unfortunately he's a big man. be hard to get down. He's pretty tall as Devontae Mihinui and his opposite there. The old veteran takes him over the sideline. Yeah, I had to off there to Kenny as well and uh, Daniel. I think it was James Tomata also. The three of them combined to hold a promising run. And in the end, it's hugely disappointing. Four young Mahinui's showed some real promise here today. 
can really sense that they're going to the semi-final at the moment, the Glenora Bears. Be Just over six to play. And they will be tough to beat. I'm uh, guessing that's what you were about to say. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you, my friend. That's all right. Yeah, they will. I mean, they've just got a good brand at the moment. Uh, really like the way that their big men are complemented by some wheels out wide and some skillful offloading ability. Feel for Coach Tony Benson. He's got some players to come back to. Here he comes again. Iwaka has just been outstanding. And the two fullbacks, again, come together. Nice sportsmanship teams. teams sort of um, approaches, supportive approaches there. Makes it look easy, doesn't he, Dale? This place with so much time. That's a good save, too, by the uh, Wahine with the Kuri at the back. <laughs> she grabbed that baby in. Oh, that kid was watching live stream by RL, no doubt about it. <laughs> That down in back play there took a decent sort of a hit. I think it might be a tour to of what? Let's have another look. Here's the short dropout. That's to evolve or climbs there. Was it? Oh, it's a hit clash, I think, with uh, Bradley Buchanan. Hope you've been enjoying the action here today. You know, deserve a victory if it should be coming the way of the home team. Tries early on to listen in Iwaka, then find money. That's Tomata. Gillett came back late. Got some results here. Uh, well, we've got Glenora for you anyway, and we know that the Point Chevalier Pirates have defeated the Mount Albert Lions by 40 to 22. The Leopards 14 12. That's full time results, mate. I would assume so. If not, uh, they're getting pretty close too. And uh, Hyper 6 Coast 34 10 at the moment. This could be provisional, but uh, we'll confirm them for you as we uh, wrap up our broadcast here this afternoon. So it would be disappointing for the Roosters if they were to concede another try, but it's very much on the cards here. As the big man tries to roll his way across Fasavalangi, he gets over the line, but he can't get the ball down. And the Glenora Bears supporters will be very pleased with what they've witnessed here this afternoon. The scoreline at halftime was 16 to 6. And then Lua Falealo scored early on to push it out to 20 to 6. Mihinui gave them some hope. And then straight after the Mihinui try, it was the standoff. The older brother. Yuaka, who was in to score, so it's been something of a Fano show here this afternoon for the fullback and the standoff, as we see Kingy now. Yuaka, then back on the inside. Brown, he's tough and he's willing. And then the big number 16 comes across the top as well. Vaka, and he's close to the line on the fifth and final tackle. Is in another one here for the Bears? Out wide they come. It's through Kingy. Now on to Kaniai. Shows it, flicks it. It's all on here this afternoon with now Big Vasuvalangi. Can he offload the ball? He can down the right side. Holding it up, Yoaka. He says, let's change direction. Here's my young bro. We'll give it a go and the chip over to the in goal. It's chased back by Sully. He fields it in the in goal. He has nowhere to go. He is locked up and couldn't break free. Yeah, Glenora, eh? once you get a lead, you can throw the ball around. They're really throwing the ball around and having some fun. But I just love the work of these Yuaka brothers. It's just so much time. And this time was the other brother, Isam, with a nice little kick into the end goal. And John Sully, he had nowhere to go but to force the ball. And they go short with their like, uh, drop line dropout. Yeah, it's a shame there for Sully because I've really enjoyed his footy today as it ends up in the hands of Isela. He's had a strong game, and that's been wrenched loose. And the referee will ask that the... Play the ball is affected. Big afternoon here for the Glenora Bears supporters. Fangupo has the ball here. And that ball back to Vasavalangi could have added salt to the wound. A 14 point victory here on the way. It would seem here for the home team. 
Yeah, it's been a good day for Gonora, but commiserations to Tiara too. They've tried really hard, but unfortunately the speed of the play of the ball has been too good for them. And Gonora's dominated that ruck area, and if you want to win a game of footy, you've got to win that ruck area. You mentioned it early on that you thought that the uh, pace of the play of the ball was just a little sluggish there from the Roosters. Pretty much right from the, uh, the get-go. And they came out with all guns blazing, didn't they? And the opening exchanges, the beers, and uh, they just made life tough. Bang, 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 and the score line's already against you. And the Roosters have been struggling ever since to catch up. And they haven't been able to because of the spirited, solid, focused defence of this Bears outfit have thrown on the table. Well, we know too that there's going to be some classic encounters still to come. Obviously, with Still got the Point Chevalier Pirates to come. The referee sensed that that was high. The Roosters took exception. These guys know each other well and I don't think they need to go on with it at this stage of the game. I think the Bears, uh, they might meet the Leopards next week in the semi final, I think it is. Glenora will play Odahu if Odahu's won that game against Richmond. Another classic game between the South and West Ham. All the action's going to be on ARL TV. That's the good thing. Here's Mihinui promising efforts throughout the first half. Right, she's going to pop out and await the conclusion of the game. We'll be getting some feedback from both captains. We'll carry it right through to the end, though. Hats off to the Seattle Two Roosters. And we're proud of what they've been able to achieve this season. Right, to have them back in the top flight. Looking forward to seeing them there for many years ahead. A proud club of the Glenora Bears as well. We know that they are a super proud club and they're always in with a chance. As we see going to ground with it on the far side of the field. Peter Olivetti. Is there one little turn to the page as the pass out the back is skillful to Clyde. Clyde works it out to Olivetti. He throws the dummy, Peter. And he's lost the ball. It's gone backwards, though, so it's still on. Uh, the referee will come across and say here. Well, it won't matter anyway. I think the referee will uh, uh, halt to proceedings. They might just finish off the penalty. But as you can see, an elated support base here at the Glenora Bears have witnessed a solid showing from their charges in this quarterfinal. Ref just wants to wrap it up <laughs> formally as the centre kicks it to touch. And now the celebrations can begin. A wonderful effort here in the quarterfinal. The host team, too strong, and they run in five tries to two. It is the Glenora Bears who win this one at Harold Moody Park, the home of the Bears, by 26 to 12. <laughs> From last night's training, do run harder, tackle with intention, make one the gaps and watch for interceptions. Keep it fair, keep it cool every section. Give your all, pass the ball, put your best in. Enjoy your day's trip, pick up your selection. Just that thing that you've been missing. Oh boy. Don't play rugby league. It's all yeah. Go, you go, are your club. Come on. <laughs>
one and all, welcome back. Solid performance here from the home team. 26 to 12 winners. The Tata Two Roosters here in the quarter final of the ARL Fox Premiership. Toby Sampson is with Wade for our post match interview. Over to you, Wade. Kia ora, just here with victorious captain for Glenora Bears, Koma Sampson. Koma, very good win today. Well, Was the plan to here start here fast? The... Yeah, I guess that's the, the plan every week, week in and week out. You know, we know that um, TAT, they're an awesome team, um, and it's always going to be a game of two halves. Uh, so for ourselves, we wanted to start as fast as possible, low error rate and stuff like that, and then we kind of went away from it towards the back end of the first half. Big game probably against Odohu Leopards next week. I think they've won 14-12. How are you looking to attack them and a bit of a revenge? Um, look, again, it's just the, the same. We want to start fast. Um, but we probably want to decrease our errors and not give them as much poor. As we all know, you know, who's a momentum team. So if you give them too much, you know, they end up rolling teams. So we'll try and try and stab them out of the game early. But for us, it's, it's more kind of working on what we need to. And, and yeah, we'll go from there. Plans for tonight? Uh, hopefully quite one. Go home and stretch. So um, not as young as I used to be or as fit as I used to be. But uh, yeah, nah, just a quiet one for me and the boys. And, and you know, we're, we're looking to go to the end. So... So no, 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 Rowdy. Nice for us, I guess. Well done, Koma. All the best, eh? Ah, awesome. Thank you. He's quite the talent, uh, Koma. And, and look, he's been around for a while. I appreciate what he's saying there, too. Uh, the boys don't get down on the ranting as they might have in the past. They, um, uh, they know they've got a job to do and it's still unfinished. As we see the young bears and bearettes out. Oh, a bit of a bulldog featuring here this afternoon, too. And... It's been a uh, great afternoon of local footy. Hope you've enjoyed it too from Harold Moody Park out in West Auckland. The rain stayed away from us, uh, which was neat. And of course, this is what uh, local footy is all about, isn't it? To see people coming together and cheering on their teams, uh, whether they win or lose. And uh, the Harold Moody Park has been uh, a great venue for this quarterfinal clash. Just uh, awaiting a chance to have a few words with Uppy, Pifaitangi. He'll be disappointed, but still, uh, the Roosters have had a good season. Let's cross over to the skipper from the Roosters with Wade. Kia ora, just here with Te Aratu captain Uppy Koro Pifaitangi. Koro, not your day today? Yeah, I'll tell you, I'm here in the Galonkia Glenora, and I'm here in the Pohiri Teneira. Nā rātou hoki i whakatauira i te tika, i te pakari o te tākaru i tēnei rāna re mihi ana ki a rātou. Um, yeah bro, it was a tough fast to come here, they've been the, the, the standard team in our pool this year, so um, yeah, we, all, we really just came with an attitude to come and play the 80 minutes and um, we left it all out there today. Yeah, unfortunately you let them start fast, it was hard to come back from. Yeah, all the, the two quick tries, they scored in the first minute of the game and um, I was really proud of the boys at halftime. We're only down 10 points and we sort of weathered the storm and um, had a good start to that second half, but just we just couldn't. Um, just came down to moments, eh? Small moments in that second half. A couple of good young fellas coming through the club Kalani, um, Devontae. Big things to, uh, for next year? Yeah, that's it. You know, it's a, it's a big plan here at Tautatu. I remember coming here two years ago. We, we started from as a low, ra- low ranked team in the championship and we've sort of uh, worked our way up. and I'm um, happy to get this far, but you know, with the young ones like Devonte and Kalan, 18, 19 years old, so they've got a huge future, and a couple of them are heading over to um, the NRL uh, junior pathway, so we wish them all the best too. Uh, commiserations on today, and all the best for the future. Kia ora, mate. Kia ora, brother. Te happy. Uh, one of our senior players now, and uh, a mentoring role for him. Uh, there's uh, Daniel Rowley Buchanan. The job is not completed. Uh, they're hoping to go a fortnight more. They've got a semi-final next week, but it was a solid showing here in the quarter-final, and I hope you enjoyed the action. Again, thanks to Stream Shop and all the guys manning our cameras, and uh, of course Chucky directs the uh, programs when we're out here in Parkland. I uh, hope you enjoyed the action, and big ups to one of the sponsors for Auckland Rugby League, from me, Dale, from Wade, and of course ARL TV. Until next time, we bid you farewell from Harold Moody Park, in Auckland's West. Too good today. The Bears beating the Roosters 26-12. Yeah,